and welcome back to our channel. If you're new here today, I'm Becca and I share this channel with my best friend Sophie, whose photo I'll put somewhere on the screen here. But in today's video, I wanted to talk to you about graduate jobs. So everything you need to know, when to apply, how to apply, uh, my top tips, um, and I'll link all the timestamps to the different elements of this video in the description below as well, as always. So let's get started. So this video is specifically about accounting, finance, banking, consulting, like that kind of industry, as that's what I'm in personally, and that's what I applied to, and most of my friends applied to a university as well. But if you're interested in other sectors, then let us know, and we can do a video on those as well. So firstly, when to apply. Now this will vary depending on the firm, however I found this amazing spreadsheet which has all of the different companies on and the different like dates that they are opening and closing, whether they're open now. And I think there are about 200 companies on this which is amazing. So I'm going to put the Instagram on screen here, but it is LSE. S-U-B-I-G, so it's like one of the societies at LSE that have put this together, so London School of Economics, which is a university in London, and I think that's absolutely amazing that they've done this. So if you go onto their Instagram, you can then go onto their link tree, so that's like the little link in their description on their Instagram, and then if you go to their application tracker on their link tree, let us know if you can't find it as we can show you how to do it on our Instagram stories or something like that, and also if you follow us on Instagram, I'll put our at here as well. We are following them, so you can just go on there and type in LSE into who we're following and you'll be able to see it. And next, I wanted to talk to you about how to apply. So usually you can just apply it via the company's website. And again, if you're not sure about like application dates, then what you can do is go to your university careers fairs or speak to your university careers team and then just ask the people um, at that specific company or at your careers team and they should be able to give you a more updated date. If not, just refresh the website every now and then. I mean, at least every couple of days, I'd say, if you're thinking it's around like that specific time. So for example, if they said they open in August, then like around August, just check it every now and then to make sure you're not missing the deadline. So now in terms of the application process, it obviously varies depending on the firm, but most of them follow a very similar structure. So initially you'll upload a CV or a cover letter or both, or you'll answer a question, you know, like a bit about you, maybe a bit about the role you're applying for or why this company that kind of thing just as like an initial application and then if they like that they'll send you through to the next stage which will usually be some sort of test so it might be via an app so that you have like games and stuff like that so maybe it's like 10 20 games that you've got to play it's testing things like resilience so how quick you are once you've failed um, to try again that kind of thing so definitely, you know, persevere with them. And um, once you get the hang of it, they're usually quite easy and it's usually like very similar every single time. And slash or you may have to do some form of tests so usually there are three kinds of tests you've got to do and for most applications you've got to do all three unfortunately so one of them is like a numerical test so it can be just like some simple maths questions and then also some like more difficult like situational maths questions where you have to apply different mathematics but usually it's like not really really difficult unless the job involves something really, really difficult. And next, you've got to do situational judgment tests, so SJTs, um, and that's usually you're given a scenario and it's like, what would you do in this scenario? And within that, you might have to write an email or something like that. Like They usually have like more wordy questions within that as well. So, and you'll be given a set amount of time to do each thing and it might ask you about like prioritization, for example. So yeah, you usually get one of those. And then finally, you usually get a logic test as well. So that will be very similar to, if anyone's watched The 1% Club, um, so Sophie actually got me hooked on that. It's so my kind of thing, where it's not really a test of how clever you are. It's more a test of like the way you think. So for example, there might be one with like different arrows for like North, East, South and West, for example. And it might be arrows pointing like North, East, west south and it would be like what word does this say and most people would look at it like huh but if you are like in the know with like how these kind of things work you'd know it would spell news so those kind of things like they definitely come up and the arrows they love the arrows and those i don't know why but i personally really enjoyed those logic tests but you can find different mocks for all the varieties of tests on the internet or via your careers team 
or for the logical one, definitely watch the 1% Club. Honestly, it's like very similar way of thinking. Next, you may have a one-sided interview. So not all companies do this, but a lot of them do. A question will appear on screen and it'll be like, can you explain to us why you want to do audit or why you're interested in banking? And then it will give you 30 seconds to prepare. So you can write some stuff down, make notes, have a think, and then they'll give you like two minutes to answer the question. So main things for that would be make sure you're looking at the camera at all times make sure you're smiling, you're not saying um and ah too much, you're being confident in the way that you're presenting it and also you're getting through all of the points within the time frame. Next, you'll probably have some form of face-to-face -face interview, so with the HR team, with the manager that you'd be working with, with a partner and it might be like multiple interviews or it might just be the one and that usually depends on how big the company is and how many applicants they're going through. So usually if it's like a smaller company, they'll probably have like your line manager and then maybe the CEO or if it's um, a bigger company, it'll probably just be someone from HR or someone from the department generally. So in the case of the big four, it's usually a senior manager, director or a partner that would give your interview. And if you're interested about the interview specifically for the big four, I've got a video on that, which I'll put a link to in the description below. So also to note, whilst this is like a face-to-face -face interview, it might be via like Zoom or Teams. They're not necessarily always in person. And also to note, these some of these steps might be like the other way around. It depends on the different companies, um, but usually the final step is some form of assessment centre. So if you don't know what that is, it's basically where you go into the firm or some sort of venue that the firm have hired and there'll be people from the company that will run these assessment centres and they'll put you through various activities and tasks. I've got a whole video again on assessment centers, so I don't want to go into too much detail here, but I'll link that in the description below, or also put it in the eye icon over there too. Okay, so finally, my top tips. So my main tip for graduate jobs is to apply early. I cannot stress that enough. Even if they are um, recruiting on a rolling basis, you know, it's so good to apply early and make sure that your application is a standout compared to the others. Next, dependent on the industry, so for example, banking, you do more, but like if accounting, for example, I always think fewer is better. And by fewer, I don't mean just apply to one unless you're super confident, I guess, but I personally wouldn't do that. I'd aim for around like seven, I think seven to 10 with like accounting, consulting, that kind of thing but it does depend on the companies you're applying for as well. So if you're applying for big companies, I think that's a good idea. But if you're applying for smaller companies, maybe where they only have one space out of like the whole year, the likelihood of you getting a place there is a bit slimmer than say in like a massive company where they've got a hundred spots available. So you've just got to, you know, make your own judgment in that case. And again, you can speak to your university careers team about that. You know, if they have any suggestions about which companies to apply for, but if you're completely stuck and have no idea where to apply, definitely look at that LSE list. I'll again put the at on screen here. So you just go to their link tree on their Instagram um, and then go to application and they've got like hundreds of companies and you can have a look at the jobs that they've got to offer. Also, if you're unsure of like when you're submitting essays or when you're submitting, you know, CVs and cover letters, the best thing to do, I'd say, is to again go to your careers team and ask them to read it through for you first before you submit because they can give you really helpful feedback that's not only helpful for that specific specific one but also for others but saying that I would say you really need to tailor all of your applications so look at the competencies that they're looking for so for example teamwork organization integrity communication that kind of thing and make sure you're putting those buzzwords into your CV or into your essays too and then finally my last tip is to make sure you know you enjoy the process as much as possible so make sure you're smiley and positive throughout it can get really hard especially when you get a lot of rejections in one go from my experience it seems like you go through the application you know they're all going well you don't hear from them for a while and then like suddenly in a week you get five rejections it's so demotivating and it's really hard to like keep going with your university studies as well whilst you're getting these rejections but I would say that you just need to persevere through because then you'll probably get like five acceptances all in the same week too. So, you know, just don't worry, don't stress, just go through the process, talk to your friends about it because a lot of them will be going through the same thing um, and make sure you're applying early. So thank you very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed and that this video has been really helpful for you. Let us know if you've got any questions in the comments below or messages on Instagram and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye.